Welcome back to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard and I'm glad you joined me this week because we are getting back to some species specific care and husbandry. This week I've chosen one of my top 10 all time favorite tarantulas. Now this one is near and dear to my heart for many reasons and I'll explain that a little later in the video. Formictopus auratus, commonly known as the Cuban bronze tarantula, is a new world terrestrial tarantula that is endemic to the island of Cuba. This species is unmistakable in the Formictopus genus, even though there has been much confusion about which species are which. The scientific name P. auratus has been applied in the hobby to a couple of different species of tarantulas that are also found in Cuba. And for a while, P. auratus was sometimes sold as P. cabinus. To make things even worse, some people have sold P. auratus as P. platus. Formictopus auratus was described by Ortiz and Bertani in 2005 and is unique due to the fine and dense golden hairs on its carapace, visible in both male and female specimens. In fact, in Latin, auratus means gilded or adorned in gold. I purchased my Cuban bronze tarantula from Fear Not Tarantulas a few years ago in a very momentous event. It may have been the first commercial retail purchase of a tarantula using Bitcoin. And to this day, FNT is the only dealer I know of that I can purchase my tarantulas using cryptocurrency. But that's a topic for another video. This is one of my favorite species of tarantulas and was actually number three on my top 10 list of New World tarantulas. This species is fairly easy to care for, very hardy, and has an amazing feeding response. Some people can be a little intimidated by this genus as they are known to be more feisty than other New Worlds. But for me, that is one of their best traits. My P. Aratus is constantly out of her hide and on display and seems to love moving around and exploring her enclosure. She also seems fond of burrowing and doing some rearranging of the substrate and plants, especially right after I get her set up. Even though the husbandry of this species is pretty typical of most New World terrestrials, there are a few things to keep in mind. I keep my slings in a basic acrylic terrestrial enclosure with more width than height. It is important to keep plenty of substrate available for this species as they really seem to prefer to burrow as slings. They also seem to prefer their substrate a little moist at this age, so I make sure to keep the substrate damp and provide a little water dish, being mindful not to let the substrate dry out completely for long periods of time. But also be aware to not overdo it and create a swampy, stagnant environment. Moist substrate and good ventilation is key. Once they have reached the juvenile stage and have outgrown their sling enclosures, I move them into a basic acrylic juvenile enclosure, again with more width than height and plenty of substrate for them to use for burrowing. I make sure to keep a water dish in their enclosure and overfill it from time to time. I do not keep the substrate entirely moist, but by overflowing the water dish and saturating a half or a third of the substrate, it gives the tea a choice as to which substrate it would prefer. Finally, when they are adults, I move them into a 5 or 10 gallon adult enclosure. Currently, I have my lady in a 5 gallon enclosure and will only consider moving her into a 10 gallon if she starts to get cramped. But shelf space is at a premium, so I will only move her into a larger enclosure if and when it is necessary. I don't worry too much about keeping this substrate damp at this stage as mine prefer the dry substrate and are more forgiving of arid conditions. I do pour water down opposite corners of their enclosures once a month or so. Doing that saturates the bottom of the substrate while keeping the top layer dry. This gives them the dry substrate they seem to prefer while also allowing for a little added humidity to seep up from the bottom layer. 
Now be careful to not overdo it as this can lead to mold growth. If you let the substrate dry out completely before saturating the bottom layer, I find that greatly reduces any issues with mold. As far as feeding, I feed my Formictopus slings one pre-killed small cricket or roach once or twice a week until they are large enough to take down their own prey. Once they're taking down live prey, I avoid feeding them any live feeders larger than two-thirds their size. As juveniles, I feed them two or three medium crickets or roaches once a week and occasionally mix it up with a mealworm. I usually crush the head of the mealworm before dropping it into their enclosure or tong feed them. But I suggest not tong feeding them unless you're very confident in your ability, as they are very quick to pounce on prey and can startle you if you're not prepared for their excited feeding response. If you do choose to tong feed, I would highly consider getting wooden or rubber tip tongs to reduce the risk of the tea breaking its fang on a metal tong. And never try to hand feed this species with your fingers. Then for adults, I feed my pretty lady three or four crickets or roaches every week or two, and I cut back on feeding as often when her activity slows and her abdomen is looking large. Occasionally, I'll also mix up her feeders with some mealworms or waxworms, and even every now and then a green hornworm. This tea can go on hunger strikes while in pre-mold, so don't be concerned if they stop eating for weeks or even a few months at a time. Once they molt and harden back up over a week or two, they will be more than ready to attack any prey you drop into their enclosure. I usually know mine are nearing a molt as they tend to spend much more time in their burrow than on top of the surface, so I don't get too worried if I don't see them for extended periods of time. I know sooner or later they will push a fresh mold out of their burrow and be eagerly awaiting a meal. I keep my Cuban bronze tarantulas at the same room temperature I keep most of my tarantulas, which is 68 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Though I do keep my slings slightly warmer at around 75 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Overall, this is an amazing tarantula to have in your collection. The Formictibus genus is much more than large brown spiders, as this species truly shows. With its gold carapace, red sete, outrageous feeding response, and the fact that it's on display more than it's hiding in its burrow, it is a great tarantula to show off to your friends and very easy to photograph and share pictures on Instagram as my feed will testify. <laughs> this is not a shy tarantula and they will move quickly in the direction of movement, so keep your fingers out of the enclosure and use tongs when feeding, cleaning, and rearranging. They have a propensity for attacking their water dish when you're refilling it, but dropping in a feeder before you fill up the water dish will usually provide ample distraction to keep them from rushing the water and slapping at the dish. So if you're looking to add to your collection and come across this species, you can't go wrong picking one of these up. And if you're purchasing one from Fear Not Tarantulas, be sure to join the Tarantula Collective Facebook group and ask a moderator for the 10% discount code for FNT. We also have contests, giveaways, and a large community of fellow tarantula hobbyists that are happy to help out and answer any questions you have about tarantulas or the hobby in general. And it's also a great place to get information, make friends, and share pictures and videos of your tarantulas.
thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to support this channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're alerted anytime I post new videos in the future. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on in the Tarantula Collective, just go to the website, thetarantulacollective.com. There you'll find links to the Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook group, and Reddit communities. Don't forget, all of our members of the Facebook group get 10% off their purchases from Fear Not Tarantulas. We also have some really cool contests going on. We've got giveaways. Uh, plus, it's just a, a fun community to be a part of. Also, while you're checking out the website, be sure to look at all the cool merchandise we have available for sale. And if you want to support the channel in another way, be sure to share these videos. Get the word out. That helps a lot. Well, thanks again for watching. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. Uh, I enjoyed making it. It's always cool hanging out with you guys. I appreciate all your support, all the likes and subscribes. And, and it's just, you guys are awesome. I, I, it's just, I keep saying it, but it continues to be true. You all rock. And uh, well, be sure to come back every Tuesday because I upload a new episode of Tarantula Tuesday. And when I have time, I try to throw in an extra video here and there throughout the week. Well, as always, it's been a blast hanging out with you all, and I will see you next Tuesday.